Hey guys, it's Justin. Uh, sorry for the long span between videos this time. My Lauren and I were actually in Florida for a week on vacation, and then I started my new job when we got back. So I've been busy with that, and also been fighting off a cold, so that hasn't been too fun. I think it's getting better, but it's just slow to slow to go away, which has been kind of a nuisance. But yeah, so I I apologize for for being away for a few weeks here. Um, I think I'm also gonna change the structure of my videos a little bit. So I kind of started out focusing on specific categories and giving knives scores and stuff like that. Um, to be honest, it, you know, it, I, think, I think some of you guys do like that. Um, but a lot of you, I think, just want like shorter videos, just some, some overview on some of these knives. Um, with maybe some more in-depth analysis and interviews thrown in there. So I think I'm gonna kind of pivot a little bit to focus more on shorter videos. Um, I still wanna give give the important information about the, the knife or, or whatever I'm looking at, maybe a, a breakfast club item or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of a change, nothing major. Still gonna be about knives, multi-tools, you know, maybe some other gear that I get in. But I did want to just say, you know, thanks a lot to all you who have subscribed and left comments. <clears throat> Please continue to do so. I really enjoy interacting with everyone and just hearing everyone's thoughts. Um, everyone's been great, which I, I didn't really expect anything less. You know, I've been in this community now for 10 to maybe 10 years or so. And everybody, pretty much everybody I've interacted with has been, been really nice, so... Anyway, I picked up a couple a couple new knives since my last video. I have one that's sitting on my end table that I'll do a video with probably here in a few days. But I wanted to touch on this one first because this one's still in production. The other one that I have is not. And this is one that a lot of you probably know, may have looked at, you know, considered, uh, maybe maybe even passed passed up. This is the Spyderco Techno 2, and just from, from seeing this, you know that by the blade style. The Techno 1 had a little bit more of a kind of a flowing blade. This one has a distinct sort of flat area on either side at the, toward the front. And then this one also has the green barrel spacers, whereas the original, I believe, had blue. Same steel, same handle, same manufacturing location. But... Yeah, I actually just picked this one up this past Saturday at Blademan's in Fort Wayne. If you guys haven't checked that store out, be sure to do so. Mark's a great guy. <clears throat> and I'm going to be doing probably a tour of his shop sometime in the new year. I'm not exactly sure when. We're, we're moving here soon. But yeah, that'll be coming sometime in the new year. And uh, yeah, so you can kind of get a look at that. But yeah, so anyway, this is one that I... It kind of had on my mind for a few months. Um, I did own a Techno 1, I don't know, a couple years back, and I sold it. I'm not really sure why, probably just to raise money for other knives, you know, as you guys, as you guys know, you know, how that goes. But never really missed it, um, never really had a second thought <clears throat> until recently. I kind of, I don't know what even got me thinking about it, but I you know, had some thoughts on, you know, and it, I remember that Techno, I think it's because I, I bought, um, the Spyderco, I think it was a Swayback, maybe, just the, the Tai Chung titanium handled, you know, just nicely finished Spyderco, that's kind of the, it's kind of a developed reputation, really, you have the, the Chef, the, the, the buoy, you know those different those different designs. So yeah, it kind of got me back to the Techno, and I knew that they had they had come out with a new design, which you see here. As I said, same titanium handles, same frame lock. You have the the wire clip here, which I believe has some kind of coating on it. They changed the color of the barrel spacers, which I think the green looks nice. Um, same nice finish on the blade. I believe this is a stone wash finish. Um, this guy has one of the sharpest edges I've ever felt on a Spyderco. 
It's up there with the Caribbean I had a couple years ago in the trunk and then I had, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago. But yeah, really, really sharp edge. <clears throat> this is the last one that Mark had in his shop. And it was kind of between this and a Chef and a, a Gail Bradley too. And I picked this guy up, but yeah, so this this is still in CTS XHP, which is a carpenter steel. Um, pretty comparable maybe to like an S, hmm, maybe an S35 to S90 V or maybe like a, uh, I'm trying to think of something else that might be comparable to. That's probably the best comparison. <clears throat> good all around steel, good corrosion resistance, edge retention. It does take a very keen edge. I mean, again, this is very, very sharp. Um, you know, it looks nice with the stone wash. I like the Techno a lot because it has a very distinct appearance. Even though you're going the, the titanium handle, handle um, stone wash, blade spider co it you know it's unique and then it has these colored barrel spacers and it has this large spidey hole so when it's closed it sort of fills that cut out in the handle so i just like this look of the knife a lot it has a good purchase with this jimping on the back um the handle fits really nicely in my hand i have pretty big hands and even this little guy the blade i think is around two and a half inches um, but even this little guy fits nicely in my hands and yeah, it's just a really great little knife. Um, anybody who ever questioned Spyderco's best factory, you know, you might as well, you might as well quit cause it's, it's Tai Chung, Taiwan. I mean, they produce Spyderco's most, um, complex knives and they honestly produce their best product in my opinion. Um, but I think a lot of other Spyderco enthusiast was, would back me up on that. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is the Maker's Mark. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. I think it's Marcin Schwish, maybe. Um, you can see Tai Chung Taiwan there. You know, it has the excellent wire clip, which is deep carry, lanyard hole at the back. I just ordered a carbon fiber scale, which will go on this side for this guy. There's a decent amount of customization options out there for the Techno. You can get copper scales, brass scales, you know, carbon fiber. You can swap the screws out for, I think they make like blue and green. I'm sure you can probably swap the barrel spacers. But yeah, just overall a really, really nice knife. Very well made. You can see here the centering is just about perfect on that guy. Um, you know, no side to side blade play no lock rock and this is probably the smoothest spider co i've ever felt or if if not the smoothest it's definitely up there so yeah that's just kind of an overview of the techno 2 um i think i paid 235 for this so you know it's definitely on on the expensive side but it's i, I think it's worth it and if you guys haven't haven't checked it out you know be sure to do so go handle one if handle one if you can and, you know, if you have some some extra knife money burning a hole in your pocket, definitely check one of these guys out. You know, it's going to show the nice pocket marks like a Chris Reeve and, you know, we don't have to pay quite that, that much of an entry price. So, yeah, anyway, if you guys have any comments, you know, please leave those or questions. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't, and we'll look forward to talking to you on the next one. Have a good one. See you.